we met a guy at Cars and Coffee just now who said, yeah, I can show you some of my cars. I have a barn with 10 or 12 cars in it. Okay, score. We're getting serious now. Oh, there's an old bar in the cover. Looks like maybe a Packard. Okay. Cool. Yeah, this is Fred Poon, and this is his wonderful house. House built in what, 18? 1889. 89, and the garage was built 25 years ago, which it looks like it was built back in the day. And I'm told he's got some pretty cool cars. We haven't been in here yet, so you're gonna see these cars the same time I do. So if you'd show us your collection, that'd be great. This is not my complete collection. I have a dozen uh, collector vehicles and mm -hmm. a couple bicycles. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to reduce the collection to manageable size. Yeah, we all are. Uh, well, I'm just too old. I'm mm -hmm. 78 already, and it's hard to get up off the floor. I know, yeah. But, uh, in front of us is a 1935 Diamond T. It's an original truck. It was uh, purchased, I purchased it from the grandson of the original owner. And what year is that? 35. 35, okay. And it even has the original paint on it. I see that. And it's got old lettering on it? There's a little bit of it right there. Wow. That was a farm truck. They had a bean farm. They also had a uranium mine. So it's probably radioactive. Oh, man. And it, it sat in the desert for 50 years. Uh, and yet the body is still this good. Well, it doesn't rain much. Now, how long have you had this truck? Oh, about uh, I don't know, 25, 30 years, something like that. And uh, when I got it, it was original and unmolested, but certainly not running. And at some point, they had a giant truck show in Fontana. And I, oh, I got to go to that. With the truck. And put my race car on the back of it. I have a 1935 Maserati Grand Prix car. Ooh. And that's in storage. You won't be able to see that. So what's your intention for this truck? Sell it. Sell it. I'm not using it, as you can see. It's just sitting. What an amazing race car hauler that would be. Hold yeah, on. but it's a lousy race car hauler. I mean, if the, if the race was five miles away, it'd be okay. Yeah, I understand. But yeah. over long distances, even though it'll go on the freeway. That is a pretty truck, wow. I restored everything that needed to be restored to make it run down the road. Now, did you repaint that firewall? Yeah. Okay. This is the original Diamond T Red. Mm -hmm. From here forward was restored. I get it, okay. But I didn't want to touch the body work because that, that's another $100,000. Right. Well, cool. Now, that, that race car, that's the race car you built. That blue one up there is my first Quasar. You designed this and built it. So it's a tube frame, I it's take it. Aluminum frame with a monocoque center section. From, from mm -hmm. here to, to there is uh -huh. all aluminum sheet metal. And did, did you build this with your own hands? Yeah. No kidding. With, well, a, with a crew. I, mean, uh -huh. I had help. So Quasar, that was a D-Sports racer. This particular one was. Every one we built was different. Mm -hmm. This car weighs 800 pounds wet. No kidding. Without the driver. Yeah. Now the engine is... It's a Sunbeam Imp built by Alan Frazier, who is the top engine builder in England. And uh, I sold my racing MG and bought the engine for what I got for the MG. Wow. MG and then built this in 19... Started building this project in 1968 and uh, took two years. I raced it in the early part of 1970 in SCCA national races, and I won every race. I did not win the national championship. You tried? Tried. <laughs> rode Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. I, I was still learning the course sure. the last lap. How many Quasars were built? That's a good question. I have two of them. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine has two. Uh, I'd say there's probably a dozen cars in the world, maybe 15. And they were built here in San Diego? In National City. National, National City. That's the official name of this place. Are these the wheels? Those are the wheels that I invented in the early 60s, started manufacturing them. I sold them to, like everybody. Yeah. The, uh, the, the wheels were very versatile, used on everything from dune buggies to Bonneville cars. So you could build them in any diameter? Essentially any diameter. These mm -hmm. are the smallest ones we made. The these ten inch. Ten yeah. inch diameter. Uh -huh. And uh, <clears throat> one of the breakthroughs of this car was the 10-inch front wheels and torsion bar suspension and 
all aluminum construction. Yeah, this, this is quite a car with a six speed. The engine peaks at 9,000 RPM, puts out 90 horsepower. Does it have reverse as well? No reverse. No reverse, okay. That's, see, D Sports Racer didn't require a reverse, right. so I found right. one of <laughs> these rare Hewland gearboxes. Yep. In fact, they own two. All right, so I don't know what kind of car that is, but I want to find out without you telling me. Is it okay if I touch it? I don't want to scrape it or anything. But you can touch it. I'm, pr I'm pretty good at this. Say. I know you're going to lose on this one. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint. No, okay, give me a hint. You made three. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an E-Type. It's, it's not a Devon SS. And it's not. There's no headlight in there. Is that right? It, it's a race car, so they, okay. they don't have headlights. So it's not a Devon. So I, I'm guessing I get the taillights. So I, it's a fiberglass, it's American special. Fiberglass American special. It's not a special. It's built by a factory, even though they only built three. In what state? Right here in San Diego County. It, it feels like a Maserati. Mm -hmm. The back feels like uh, was an A6. Good guess. I love Maserati. Yeah, the chances are, ah, let me think, do I know this car? I, I bet I do. Is it, is it a, do they have a Buick engine in it? Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. Did all three of them come with Oldsmobiles? No, some of them came with Buicks. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I got the back, I get it, I get the front. As soon as you tell me the name, I'm going to say, damn. This is the kind of car you see at Monterey every couple, you know, every once in a while. I had it at Monterey once. What color is it? Dark. Well, medium blue. Medium blue. I, I, I believe I know the car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it have like aluminum slotted mags on it? It's got uh, replica American mag wheels on it. I know, I know the car. I just can't think of the name of it. Let's do it. I feel like a failure now. But... Oh, yeah. Is it a Gemini? Oh, okay. And what's the brand? Santee. Don't, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Santee Super Sports. Huh. It's the racing version of the Santee Sports. Wow. So built three right in Los... Santee San Automobiles Inc. built three cars. Uh huh. I was the chief engineer for that company. No kidding. What year? 1962. It's a uh, aluminum... Oh, 215. Ah, it's, it's a light car. Yeah, okay. So what kind of differential is that? Well, this is not what it came with. This is a Corvette differential. Wow. Transmission's mounted to the front of it. It's a transaxle. Is that the way they... Yeah, that's the way I designed it. Whoa. Transaxle works good in a sports car because not only does it balance the weight out, but there's no hump in the cockpit. Right. You got a long shift rods going back, I guess. Yeah, uh -huh. that works okay. Where'd you get the name Santee? What does that mean? It's the town where it was built. Ah. And 215 aluminum block, no kidding. Oh, that's a radical motor. Well, it Whoa. is. Whoa, whoa. The genesis of it was that Oldsmobile decided they would go racing around 1960 or so. And so they started producing a racing version of the 215 Oldsmobile. I don't know if they, if Brabham used it to make the Repco engines, yeah. but, but it was uh, certainly available in the catalog from Oldsmobile mm -hmm. through the dealers. And at Santee Automobiles, we noted that. And so we bought, not, you couldn't buy the engine, but you could buy the parts to make an engine. And the, the heads are, are so rare that even the 215 specialists don't even know they existed. They have compression ratios beyond anything <laughs> you can imagine. And they have huge ports and at the time we went to visit Mickey Thompson who was working on one of these things wow. for Indianapolis and we showed we sh he, we noted he was making special racing heads by welding aluminum onto the heads and then grinding them out Man. so you don't have to do that yeah yeah, yeah. Oldsmobile has a part number for a head like I've that I've never heard of that motor <laughs> no. no it's a special part number so what kind of horsepower do you think it puts out? It puts out around 300 horsepower at the flywheel. Mm -hmm. that, I, it's detuned a bit. Now this engine was, it looked like this when Santee built it. <coughs> With the but, Webers on there? Yeah, and I, I, I was a fan <coughs> of the Ram tuning. Mm -hmm. So I built this cross flow system also to get the hood to close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. <coughs> and also 
we found out when we raced it the first time that it needed a, a different uh, oiling system because the, uh, the engine blew up because the oil was flung away from the pickup. Oh, the yeah, acceleration okay. was enormous. Well, we bumped into the right guy this morning. Wow. What else you got outside here? Okay, I, I know what this is without even touching it. It's a Morris Minor Traveler. Oh, isn't this sweet? Hmm. Uh, it's a, uh, we've had this over 50 years. It's got, have you put a 1275 in there? Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's a driver. It's gone almost 100,000 miles. Man. New, and this is the third engine. <laughs> wow. It's my wife's car. It's her first car. I know. I bought it. We've been married 51 years, and I bought it for her after we were married. Great. It was Can I her, open the door? Yeah. It was her daily driver for many years. No kidding. You put disc brakes in the front? Yeah, it's got yeah. MG disc brakes in the yep. front, which yep. still aren't very good, but they're better than, than nothing. Uh, what car do you have two SUs? This one has one SU. One SU, okay. It's at, off an of Austin America, which had a 1275 yeah. in it. It worked really good on these cars. Uh, that's a great car. It is a wonderful car. And I've got a Datsun 5-speed transmission in it. So it's got overdrive. Yep. I used to race the Morris Minor in vintage racing, SVRA, and I, I, met, I, met, <laughs> I know it's an oxymoron. Wow, very nice car. So it's, it's still a, a, you know, a driver. Do you, do you drive it once in a while still? Yeah, we take it down to the, the Bonita show or mm -hmm. a British car meet or a, yeah. This is the one I actually like touring in the most because I trust it. Yep. Packard, I haven't driven it enough to trust it. Yep. That's a sweetheart. Wow. <laughs> this is a Morris Minor Traveler. What year it is, I don't know. It could be a 57, could be a 67. They're all kind of the same. I happen to like this car for several reasons. First of all, it's a Woody, and I love Woodies. It's a, it's a Morris Minor, which uh, is a, a pretty reliable car. It was, the, it was the British equivalent of a Volkswagen Beetle. Kind of everybody had one. It was known as a, a Nanny Mobile, because uh, nannies drove them around England. Thirdly, because they're just cute as a button. They're reliable. Everybody smiles when you see a car like this. Uh, you could drive it every day. Uh, you can get parts for these still. Parts are made, uh, and I think they, they might still be making Morris Miners in India, I'm not sure. But parts are easy to get, they're easy to work on. There's like a little sewing machine motor in there. Reliable, good gas mileage. There's no reason uh, that not to have one of these. So uh, I really enjoy seeing these in this condition. This man has owned this for a half a century. When he got married, 51 years ago, he bought, within the first year, he bought his wife this car, and they still have it today and still use it regularly. Anybody can work on a car like this. This, this was probably, you know, kind of like a Model T in England, that you could get parts for them anywhere and work on them yourself. Uh, you didn't need fancy equipment or a lot of knowledge to be able to repair a Morris Minor. Love it, love it, love it. So this was your shop before you built that building? Yes. Certainly not big enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a machine guy. I mean, you lathe. And when you own cars, they make three of. We were at a, a Cars and Coffee this morning in Bonita, California. Met Fred there. He was eating his bagel. We were eating our donut. And he found out that we were looking for old cars. He said, come on over to our house. So thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Thank you very much. Fun. Thank you. Okay, so this looks like a race car here. So what's this I hear that you have a GT500 Shelby that's unrestored, completely untouched? No, not, okay. not quite original, but unrestored. 